episode 40. Something for everyone. Kevin Lang. We're back, baby. What's up, Pete? Dude, good to see you again. You as well. Uh, hell yeah, dude. Something for everyone. So I've started this podcast with the idea of learning something from everyone is where this, this name came from. Uh, and I'm so glad to have you back. I always feel like I learn a lot when we chat. I'm honored. Uh, I'm now honored. we got 40 episodes in. It feels like I've been, yeah, this is coming up on a year now that I've been doing this, which yes. is wild. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Before we get into everything... What's Euclid got? What's Euclid got coming? I'm saying say the band name right, Peter. Come on, <laughs> yeah, you're good. I uh, so yeah, we have a uh, a huge show coming up at the end of this month. Um, so far, that's the only. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's the only thing that's confirmed right now Hell with yeah. the date. Yep, yep, yep. I will say that for yep. for sure, as always um, in band world. Yeah, yep. uh, October 29th at the Webster, we will be playing main stage. Hell yeah, it'll be my first personal time playing main stage at Webster, so I'm really stoked on that. Um, it's with Carnifex, Last 10 Seconds of Life, uh, Signs of the Swarm, and To the Grave. Um, Such a fun lineup. We're also going to have two new uh, merch. What a mess. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to have two new merch designs. Okay. Um, a long sleeve and a t-shirt in addition to what we already have. So Hell yeah. Pretty stoked on that, yeah. That's sick. That merch game looks sick. I'm stoked to see that happen. I'm playing the main stage finally. I know that they just like revamped it, redid it. So I'm stoked to see yeah. how, it, how it changed. I think they added LED screens, walls. Was, yeah. It's a rumor I've heard. What I saw on Facebook, it looked like they did like a lot of, you know, um, I don't know, like aesthetic changes. Yeah. Um, I'm really interested to see because like I've been going to the Webster since I was a kid. So, yeah. you know, to see it revamped is going to be and, and getting to play on that stage that I've been going to. Ah, it's just a different kind of. I think a big part of that budget was sound stuff, which I won't give a flying fuck Dude, about. That yeah. they gave new speakers, yeah. but I'm assuming for you guys, yeah, play the main That's stage. Huge. Be, I actually didn't know that. I believe that that was like the big piece, and it's a. Uh, I except my thought there was it is an interesting piece to like. Obviously, as a venue, like this upgrading the speakers, like their job is to put on music, right? Having good speakers is super important to that, right? But I'm not convinced that anyone will know the speakers are upgraded besides you guys, right? Like, yeah, I, I would, won't know. I would agree. I right? would agree. And so I think it's, I had the thought that it's a really interesting investment to make as a venue where it's like, you have to upgrade the speakers, but how do you even tell people you upgrade the speakers? Whereas like, whatever the speakers cost, let's say it's, I don't know, 10 grand a rack. There's four racks called 40, right. 50 grand or something. 50 grand could f- redo the entire bar. Right. Yeah. And I would argue that you can make more money off of a refurbished bar than you would off of speakers. But the bands don't come if you don't do the speakers. So I remember yeah, having this I was interesting like, say, dilemma of like, I, yeah. who do you please and how do you please who in what order? So I think it's a full circle tactic. Yeah. Because if you have better hardware, better monitors back to the artists, um, better stage sound, yeah. um, just clearer speakers overall, you know, you got to think um, I like I'm, I, as a vocalist, you would think that I have in-ears, you know, everyone else in my band uses in-ears. Yeah. I don't, dude. I can't use them. Um, they distract me actually. Like I can't, like, it's like my head voice. I mm-hmm. can't hear anything else. So when I start to do vocals, my vocals will be louder than everything else around it. And yeah. then I lose my place. So I have to use stage sound. So input monitoring back is a big deal for me. Um, I definitely sacrifice my hearing, but that's just the way I've adapted. Uh, isn't, how is it different than when you're tracking? Because I know you've been posting the video cover, the vocal covers lately, yeah. which has been sick. It's been fun to see, yeah, the more Thanks. raw, like unedited version of what yeah, Kevin's yeah. capable of. It's sick. Uh, but I assume when you're recording those that you have yourself in your ear as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I guess, yeah, how is that different than being on stage and having yourself in your ear? Volume. Okay. And also I have a, I have full control of what I can hear back. Right. So I can lower my voice and then turn the music up. Like I do it on telling you when I'm recording my voice, I have the volume at max. And like, if I were to take it off my head, <laughs> you would hear like very clear as day in the yeah, entire yeah, yeah. mix. Like, okay. So I do, I, I have hearing damage. So that's <laughs> another part. Uh, of it. If there was like a front of house engineer that you guys had at every show, is there a world where you could have in ears and just have your mix at 5% and the band at 95% or something? Yeah. If like if in a perfect was, world, would you go in here? Yeah. If I was through the mixer mm-hmm. sent to my ears yeah, and then it was blended within the mix. Mm-hmm. Yes. Then I would have no issue with that. Um, that I don't think that that's unheard of to do. Um, we just don't have that set up okay. or a means to have that set up. So, I mean, I would love that because that would make my life so much easier. Is but that what the top? Is that what the current effect setup would be? I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. I, I actually have never asked anyone if that's how they do it. Um, you would think that I would, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> that's not like you're. I don't. I don't get the sense that you're obsessed with that. I feel like Maddie is the one who. Yeah, Maddie is obsessed definitely obsessed with that, and he yeah. would know exactly. Yeah. yeah, how that chain is. What running. planet are you from, Kevin? <laughs> Whatever. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> Shout out, Matt. He's got all the good questions for us today. Yeah, um, yeah. Eight months, eight months, six months since you were here, I guess. It was February. We're yes. in what now? November, October? October? October. So a little eight months there. See if I, uh, I didn't learn my months until like deep into high school. I couldn't do my months in order. It was just one of those like Bro. got everything else, but that was one I couldn't. And I'm laughing that I know my mom listened. Shout out mom. And she was laughing internally hearing me stumble through <laughs> how many months were between February and October of like, fuck, I'm not bad at math. I'm just bad at months <laughs> dude so huge thing in my family for like a long period of time was uh we were all at a dinner and on the spot i don't remember the context of how it came <laughs> sure. up but they were like what are the months of the year kevin and i was like uh and dude i never lived it down <laughs> and uh how, my old, cousin, wait, how old are you <laughs> too old <laughs> put it that way i was probably i mean i don't know i was Probably around like ten to thirteen, okay, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Yeah, but, it's vibes. um, vibe city. Yeah, I, I it was just one of those things I never thought of. And then my cousin Timmy, he was, I believe, I shouted him out last time I was on here too, little fucker. Um, <laughs> he made fun of me for a little while for it, and uh, I will never forget the full circle, dude. I was like sixteen years old, and he was like, "Yeah, I remember when you didn't remember the months of the year?" And my family was like, "Oh yeah, why don't you say the months of the year, Tim?" And he was like, "No shot." Oh, oh and then. Boom. It was his turn. So happy. So oh, I'm no. glad I'm not the only one. Dude. That's what I got to do. I got to start asking everyone else in my family to say the months until I find <laughs> someone else who can't do it. And then it's I can pass me. it off. That's not a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. But yeah. I mean, also a great idea. Yeah, because what if you forget on the spot? It's I like, will. Uh, It'll backfire. Yeah. yeah. They're like, well, what are the days of the week then? It's like, oh, fuck. I didn't plan this I don't this even know one. where I am I right now. study for this question. <laughs> Uh, it's been a while, dude. Since you were here last, we had an album release. Yep. We had uh, the show at the Webster. We had the headliner the other night. Yep. We had 100,000 views on the River Pig video that yeah. we were all excited and cryptic about last time. And it's been yep. it's been an exciting time to be in Euclid. Dude, Man, what's, yeah, what's been happening? This has um, hands down been the best experience uh, I've ever had as a musician. Mm -hmm. um, everyone that I worked with in this band and, uh, you know, even behind the scenes in the production, mm -hmm. um, everything. Um absolutely has made me feel like I stepped into that role. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I am a musician. I am the front man. I am, you know, and uh, that sense of confidence really paid, uh, played a part in where like the risks that we take and all the things that are going. Cause it's just like, dude, at the end of the day, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we're, if we want to be a highly regarded group, then we have to act like we should be a highly regarded yep. group. Bingo. And, yep. you know, um, I got so, that advice. Uh, there's a book called Atomic Habits. Uh, and it's all about, yeah, kind of optimizing yourself and or just structuring your life in a way that's more effective. Uh, and that was one of the big things I took from it is this idea of like, if you, when I'm here, I'm a podcaster. It doesn't matter right. how fake I feel doing it. It doesn't matter how little I think I have to talk about or offer to the world. Mm -hmm. When I'm here, I have to tell myself that I'm a podcaster and that has to be the thing. And same thing when you're, uh, when I'm, you know, shooting a show, it's like, it doesn't matter if I'm scared, nervous, whatever. Like yeah. in that moment, I have to be a videographer. I have to be a photographer. And I have to own that identity and be very confident in that. And I'm kind of hearing you say the same thing. Like, even if you don't totally believe in it, you have to assert yourself as it. And that's right. how you become it. That's how right. you gain the it's confidence to be it. Yeah. You know? Hell yeah. That's a, yeah, a wild six month journey then. And I think it's also exciting for, yeah, for you to, I've been obsessed with this idea that, or interested in this idea that like, as we kind of let go of stuff and let it happen more, that we then have more success in it. And I think yeah. that's kind of what you're finding is like, yeah. I would assume for a lot of your life, you were fighting and squeezing and churning to make the perfect band. Yeah. And now it's like, I'm an adult. I'm going to just do the things I know how to do. Stay in my realm. Trust that everyone else can do their thing. Yes. And now we've had success as right. a result of that. It's peaceful. Yeah. You know, the only stress is truthfully that we have as a group is uh deadlines for mm -hmm. stuff yep uh and it's like stupid shit it's yep. mostly like we're all like 30 year old men you know we got yeah. bills and shit so we're just like yep. oh we don't order this by this day we're <laughs> fucked and like we're all scrambling and then it happens and then everyone's just like we're best friends love you guys blah blah, blah like immediately after so it, it's funny how you know it works but i think last time we talked euclid was still kind of in a I don't know, uh, a puberty stage, where I guess maybe now it's in the puberty stage and that was a childhood stage. Yeah, right? yeah, We're I would agree. I would now agree. growing, and that was kind of before Euclid had taken the stage, before you fully knew what it was because it hadn't been actualized totally yet, right? There'd been yeah. Muse recorded. I know Euclid, I guess, has an album, so I guess I'm really talking about Euclid plus Kevin or Euclid with Kevin. Yep. Um, but I think, yeah, there's a lot that's grown and changed in that. I'm guess kind of curious, like, as as a has it, how does it shape where you're going forward? Like, are you, uh, I feel like now that you've kind of got a taste for success, it makes it, hard to 
kind of stay casual. It makes it very enticing to go and fight and do the, all the hard, like stressful stuff that maybe isn't actually beneficial. Yes and no. Um, I do know what you're alluding to. Um, it makes me hungry. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, it's definitely kind of like, uh, I, there's a point, there was a point in my life where I had this like, uh, existential uh situation like mm -hmm. within my uh myself where i kind of was like what am i capable of truly mm -hmm. you know what i mean and like because if you this is like way off topic to a degree that's a beautiful um, question no go um if you let society take control of your life where you're in that monogamous uh, like go to work, come home, do chores, weekends, you know, it is what it is. Um, but you can't enjoy other facets of your life within that spectrum. I feel like that becomes daunting. A lot mm -hmm. of people start to fall into like depression and it affects you. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, if you change your perspective a little bit and you just appreciate like, not like negate the nine to five part of your day, but kind of like, find things within that nine to five that make that day worth it. Even if it's little tiny things here and there. And then after you get out of there, it's like, all right, well it's five o'clock. I might be a little tired tomorrow, but I like what I do. I might be able to get up and have a good day tomorrow. Maybe I can stay up till fucking one, two o'clock in the morning and make that song idea that I was thinking of, or, um, you know, and then tying back into your original question, when, Euclid put stuff out and we got our responses the way that we have been. That was like, I, it was eye opening that I had uh, as much of a response as mm -hmm. we had gotten. And it was like a huge adjustment period. Cause I was like, are we cool? Are we just like, are people just being nice? Are we, you know, whatever. But as the numbers grew and grew and grew, I was like, yo, these people want some more shit from us or something. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, recently I started, I just have a lot of free time. So I was just like, I'm going to, make videos of songs that we're writing and, you know, do little things here and there post stuff. Cause like if you're relevant, then your band's relevant, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to stay in people's eye. A hundred percent. Yep. It's a, uh, it's a struggle I have, especially with this podcast. We're talking a little bit before the show. Uh, but for me, it's like, I really should be pumping this thing full of clips and putting up clips yeah. all the time. It's like, I just can't bring myself. Like I'm, I feel like I'm doing the most I can. I'm doing the yeah, best yeah. I can, and that's all we can do is the yep. best. Uh, but I've had the same thought of like, to some degree, the best way to make more music videos is to grow this podcast and just get more eyes on the thing, and then Absolutely. that can grow as well. Yeah. Uh, but it's a tough balance to find, and I think in the context of music, it's like, and I guess same with music video, it's like the thing I'm working on isn't public yet. So I'm curious when you're sharing unreleased Euclid songs, like uh, I think probably it only benefits the release, or right? like I think... I think it only benefits the release, but there is also an argument that it's like you're you're taking away from it because you're leaking it almost ahead of time. Yeah, um, I think I think truthfully, it would take away from the like surprise of the release mm -hmm. if it was a fully mixed, finalized version that yeah. I leak of. You know what I mean? Because everything's subject to change, mm -hmm. and like my videos that I make, like I would be lying if I said I took absorbent amount of time to right. do yeah. you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. it's maybe 15 to 30 minutes yep. with editing i just do it quick you know on my porch and um you know they're they're demo mixes and i i love so maddie is my biggest critic uh, and so is coco um they both like i'll post something and then like <laughs> not even like a millisecond after I post it, they're like, what are you doing? It's like a Why'd seven minute song that? and 30 seconds later, yeah, they have yeah. like a full critique. Yeah, it's yeah. like, how does this? Yeah, yeah. So like Maddie's always just like, should have done that. Oh, you're such an old person. Oh, blah, 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 this, that. Yeah. So, uh, yo, Maddie, grow hair. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Loser. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I don't think it takes away from the release because yeah. it's, and also not for nothing. Like I don't get, that much attention you know what i mean I like think, only people who know me mm -hmm. see my stuff and that's if they give a shit yep um i think that's exactly the key is that so only the only people who see that are people in your life which means that there's four-fifths of the band who isn't seeing that four-fifths mm -hmm. of the you know band's fans that aren't seeing that uh, and also it's like the people who are seeing that are super fans they become excited they become interested in it right and i think even in the context of leaking it's like if you're Drake, you're still leaking songs because it builds hype, right? right. Like I think uh, we have this idea that leaking is bad, that it only makes things bad. And it's like, 
if you put out every single song right now in the full mix, it's bad. But you're right. If it's kind of a casual, like only a little verse, it's a snippet, it's a live thing. So you're doing a little different. Yeah. Then 100%, the mystery is still there. And you're just building anticipation for this thing. You're building curiosity. You're telling right. us that like something's happening. Whereas I think a lot of bands, I don't know, I guess you kind of want to go dormant for a little while. I think the music industry heads would say that you have to go dormant so you can come back louder and bigger and better. Yep. But to me, it's like in the context of a local scene, it's like there's no time to go dormant. You don't no, have time to sit six months in between genre. releases, right? Like exactly that. Uh, and I think Dreamwake is one I also think of who's done a great job of this. It's like oh, they're yeah. all putting out content across the entire band yep. and it's kept them relevant where I know they're working behind the scenes. Right. Just Dave was on here the other day talking about, you know, what they're cooking up. Uh, so I'm not oversharing there, but they've, you know, it's been a year since their last album. Like in, in a sense, they should have pause it should have slowed down it's like no they've done a great right. job of continuing to post covers and remixes and solos and vocals and whatever yeah and that album has stayed in the zeitgeist for a whole year now it's been great yep. uh, and i think that's a, a really valuable model for us to look at is like yeah just agree. keep mining it just keep yeah th yeah stay relevant keep so the biggest thing that i've seen is like uh survival mm -hmm. um because like this genre is so oversaturated yeah and if you take a break there is the possibility that someone could take your place. Mm -hmm. You have to stay. Like, if you want to be top dog, it's kind of like King of the Hill. You got to be top dog at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying Euclid's top dog or anything, but, like, yeah. that's the mentality that you have to have mm -hmm. to stay relevant and to survive and to do well. Um, because not only, you know, is the band an expression-based art form, it's also a business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't want to open your business, promote it for... I don't know, a few weeks and then just like, you know, people may not have people heard of it, it within that few weeks yep. and you lose your customer clientele yep. and now, you know, your business is going under. Survival's um, the key. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we, um, it's funny you mentioned Dreamwake because, uh, I was actually just talking to Dave, uh, the other day and I mentioned to him that, um, Euclid hadn't played yet when I saw their, their first show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember seeing them play live and I was, blown away because yeah. i remember when they were you know um in honor of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was yeah. like dude like these guys grew up yeah. like that it yeah. it was just so different and so incredible but the, it wasn't just even that it was the tightness mm -hmm. it was the professionalism it's clear they, they had the props the and the, and yep. dude like i was genuinely blown away and that was my mm -hmm. first time coming back to the music scene after like a six-year hiatus yep. and I could not be any more proud yeah. of anyone than them yep. and uh, made me for sure a lifelong fan. So like, you know, I, I separate myself from not only being their friend, but like, I definitely am a fan of that band. And like, Absolutely, I would yeah. like to, I guess, like uh, have that relationship with other people as well mm -hmm. uh, within the scene th through Euclid. And, you know, you can do that by, having content that makes you personable and, you know, get people that may have not listened to your band or people that uh, have never heard of you, see you and be like, Oh, that guy's funny. You know, maybe he, mm -hmm. you know, and then they see your vocal videos they're like, Oh shit, that guy's sick. You know what I mean? Like yep. you can really, um, market yourself in so many different ways. Just, you know, Social was, media is incredible for that. That was part of my thing with the podcast is like, people only see what I make and I don't, if, other than that, you don't know me at all. I'm not on social media in the sense right. of like my, if you read my Facebook statuses, you don't know who I am. You're just right. seeing what I make. And that's true of my Instagram posts of all the stuff. Uh, so yeah, I've had the same thought that it's worth putting more of me out there and yeah. hope that kind of rounds out the figure. Uh, I want to go back. You said that the, the goal here was in survival, that it's about the long game. And I've loved that. And that's always been a thing that I've tried to keep in mind where it's like, especially in the early days where I'm shooting shows for 20 bucks. Right. right. And it's like, if someone doesn't pay me, it's like, is it worth going on Facebook and trying to cancel them is it worth blowing that oh, up yeah, or yeah, yeah. is it just like take your fucking lashes the goal here is to be in this game in the long run the 20 bucks there don't matter in the context of 10 years past that whatever the money is 20 right. bucks is an irrelevant amount of money right. if i stay in this or i don't make it past that and those 20 bucks don't matter anyway yeah and to me it was always like no the, the goal here is in the long and that doesn't mean get get walked over it doesn't mean yeah don't stick up for yourself but like be supportive, play the long game, and be aware that like things are going to come and go and things are going to be wrong. But yeah. like you're right. The goal isn't staying afloat. It's in staying alive. It's not worth stressing about this little inconvenience, the little shit, because, yeah, my goal is just to stay in business a year from now. That's really yep. all that's, that I'm yep. trying to focus on, and that will get me close to whatever the end goal is. And, yeah, I've, I've joked that I'm, I want to build an empire. I don't quite know what that means or what that looks Dude. like or what that entails. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've had that joke, and it's like, yeah, I don't know. 
I have no idea what that is. I know for that to happen, I got to be in business for one more year. <laughs> yeah. At the very least. Yeah. That then has I'll have to, my empire. That has to be, yes. So to me, it's like, okay, how do I keep the doors open? What do I do to make this ship stay happening? And it is still happening. Uh, I'll go from there. And I think it's, yeah, been a fun process. And you're right. I think it, there's been something freeing of like, don't aim for the... Don't aim for the Super Bowl, right? Euclid's not aiming to play the Super Bowl halftime show. That's right. great. Hopefully in 10 years it happens. Hopefully right, somehow right. turnstile and knocked loose paved the way for that to be a yeah. thing. Right? But like more realistically, it's like, no, how do we just win this week? How do we win this month? What do we do to stay on track and make sure that we're doing everything right now and that'll come? If it comes, we got to keep the doors open until yep. then. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's also been fun. Uh, the other piece of this is the River Pig music video. Also, my chair keeps like falling. Sagging. Yeah, it's driving me so insane. So I'm thinking <laughs> I'm just going to stay here as, on the ground as a kid. But um, <laughs> whatever. Uh, River Pig video came out. We were all hyped about it. And then it comes out and gets 100,000 views. I mean, that's yeah, dude. That's bonkers. That's a bonkers amount of people. Yeah, we were <laughs> like <laughs> and so, genuinely. And seeing all the reaction channels go through it, like, I think it must be fun to watch other yeah. people just be a fan of you. I think we yeah, about the Dreamway context. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it must have been a really gratifying experience to watch all that come together. Yeah, it was. Um, and actually, you know, it's it's funny because there were a couple um, reaction videos that we got where, and I appreciated this genuinely, mm -hmm. it was not like uh, they were kissing our ass. Yeah. They were like, oh, I wanted, I was like, you can see it in their face. They're like the buildup and they're like, all right, that was mm -hmm. cool, but like I wanted more and like mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, I feel like sometimes people get like upset about that um, kind of feedback because they they so badly want their material to be top notch and to be what yeah. it is. But everything's subject to criticism, mm -hmm. and in order for you to adapt and to mold and to and to you know capture the attention of other potential fan bases and stuff, you have to take that feedback and you yep. have to you know do. I guess implicate whatever it is that that you know may be that they that they might like or something like that and yeah. like I it's not that I even disagree with them you know it, it's just part of I I appreciate the honesty mm -hmm. because in turn and I feel like a lot of people should do that more with bands uh, even if you support them um, like obviously don't go and tell a band like yo that riff honestly sucked <laughs> and you could do a better one like yeah not that but um, have your opinions and support and do what you got to do. Um, if you have the opportunity to constructively give them that advice just from your perspective mm -hmm. and only from that opinion, if they're mature artists and they really do want to do well, you know, given the context, it might be just kind of hate. I understand there's a, no, sorry. there's I'm, a difference. I'm laughing that you just opened yourself to getting punished so bad at the next Euclid show. Oh, You're going to the Webster and some kid's going to come up and be like, the mids, the mids on the EQ of your vocal chain oh, was so yeah. bad. I will the say reverb this. was too dry. I will say this. There is nobody that will be harder on me than I am on myself. Yeah. Yeah. So give me all the licks, man. I'm not going to, you know, you're not going to break me. Uh, yeah. Um, It is what it is. You yeah. know, I'm not for everybody and that's okay. You know, there's vocalists yeah. I listen to that a lot of people are just like, Duh! and I'm just like, nah. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I don't care. There's something about our genre to me that's so freeing. And I think if you're if you're Drake, who's in, yeah, released an album or whatever, I guess I saw on Twitter this morning or on X this morning. Um, but I think if you're Drake, like rap is a genre that we believe is accepted by everyone. And I think when you get into metal, you have to accept that, like, no, I'm not for everyone. I'm in this little, yeah. this little pond. Sneashy. It is. And I think there's a really valuable thing there in the context of what you're saying in the music sense of like it. It beats you, not beats you down. It enforces this thing of like, yeah, what I like isn't for everyone. And most people don't like what I like. So right. because I like this music that everyone else thinks is dumb and bad and angry and aggressive, it's yeah. like, okay, I think they're wrong. But that is a very valuable thing for me then to go. When someone says, I love Taylor Swift, it's like, I think that's dumb and bad and stupid. But what do I know, right? Like, yeah. I am now the other person. And it's a really interesting insight that I think if we are in a rap scene where we're invested in being cool it's like we never quite get that appreciation of the other right it's all about right. being the in crowd yep. and i think it's a kind of an interesting underlying trait to a lot of people i've talked to in this show of like as a metalhead you kind of have to accept like yeah i'm weird i don't fit in right yeah awesome okay now i have made peace with that and now i can just go be me yep. instead of trying to fight this thing and be someone else all yep. the time yep uh it's actually interesting because like obviously i I am a stereotypical <laughs> aesthetically. I'm a metal head, you know, to sure. the core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't primarily listen to metal. Though. Same. Um, what do you listen to? Let's get into it. 
Um, okay, well, subgenres of metal. Okay. I guess you could like f- factor it into a degree. I really like progressive rock. Okay. Progressive metal. What's like um, a yeah, give me some artists. What is a what uh right mean? now I'm on a Carmen Jaca kick. Okay. I have no like, idea what that is, but I'll check it out. Oh, later. dude. Okay. Fall time driving. <laughs> Look, like literally today's weather. If yep. you're outside and you yeah. play this, uh, I believe it's uh, Ancient Skills EP. Okay. Oh my god, dude! It's like ethereal to me, at least. Absolutely. Um, but I also like Carnival. They're mm-hmm. a huge uh, part of my. Uh, so every season, my music taste changes because I like to attach nostalgia to them um so if i discover a new band <laughs> your music I, taste falls the duncan menu <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no like i swear to god like uh like karma jock i just discovered earlier this summer and i was kind of like right when i listened to it i was like this sounds like something i'd rather listen to in the fall mm-hmm. so i waited to like really delve yeah. into it dude right when the leaves started dropping and it was like nice crisp 40 degree mornings window down music blaring i'm playing karma jock i'm like Yo, hell yeah! This is where it's at. That's the vibe. Um, but I also like, uh, like funk, uh, house music, uh, primarily rap for the most part. I listen to the worst rap in the world. It's yeah. like it's one of my favorite things about me. It's like, man, if you need bad songs, dude, I got, <laughs> I got stacks, oh, stacks of them. Hell one yeah! One of these days, I say it all the time on the podcast. One of these, this thing has Bluetooth, and one of these days, I'm a, I'm a Bluetooth in and just ruin the whole show with, <laughs> with my bad music. <laughs> Uh, but Jesus Christ, this chair is gonna drive me up the wall. I gotta replace these. These are next next on my list. Officially, <laughs> you're here first, folks. I these might have an extra list. one, actually. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, whatever. Neither here nor there. Um, oh, where we, oh, bad music. Yeah, I. Uh, but the reason I'm interested, I think, in what I listen to is because part of it for me is like part of why I listen to rap is so fun to me is because it's like a white noise that I can like tune out. Whereas yeah. I think when I put on, I listened to Boston Manor a lot recently, and like when I hear that. I really listen to the mix. I listen to what they're saying. I listen to what they're not saying. I listen to the implications of I try to read right. between the lyrics lines. And somehow with rap, it's a world that's so foreign to me or so unlike the one I live in uh, that I can just dissociate myself and it just is kind of on in the background. Yeah. The flip side, I think, there is that the ideas that come into my head are coming into my head from rap lyrics, right? Like I'm not listening to, I don't know, I'm, as a kid, I would listen to Memphis May Fire all the time. And it's like, somehow, I don't know how that made music videos come out of me, but I'm sure it did. I'm sure that having... Oh, yeah that many bands of that caliber you know and it's like if i only listen to rap am i like polluting myself am i doing myself a disservice to it and i don't think so i think inspiration can come from a lot of places yeah but i'm curious in your take like as a vocalist as someone who is also creating art like is it scary to listen to uh carnifex just because they're the band name we used earlier because that vocal melody will get in your head like whether you like it or not it will be in there yeah and I've heard Polyphia talk that like they, and I don't know how true it is, and I don't know how recent it was, uh, but that they don't want to listen to metal. They only listen to pop because that's what they want to come out of their guitars. And that's yeah. how they're able to make, and it makes a lot of sense in hindsight that like that that's the shift there is, right? Is they they have metal in their soul, but by only consuming pop, they were able to kind of like put a softer edge on it, a more marketable yeah, edge yeah, yeah. on it. And you get this really unique sound. As a vocalist, yeah, is it tough then to enjoy other music because you don't want to pollute yourself? Are you happy to explore it? How does that, how do those two things weigh for you? Yeah, I pull... So, like, uh, I have a very, like, I feel like my brain doesn't work much differently than other people that are in, like, this industry. Mm -hmm. But it's relatively complex to a degree because I'm very rhythmic with the way that I think. Okay. So when I listen to hip-hop or I listen to uh, rap, um, funk, like, whatever it may be, Mm -hmm. um, the way that they flow over, like, a four count. You know what I mean? Like, is it on the upbeat? Is it on the downbeat? Is it, you know, three quarters, you know, 16, you know, like that, that whole, like the dividends and everything like that. Um, I like to pull inspiration from other artists and flows Mm -hmm. and kind of like work it over what would be a non-conventional instrumental for metal. So there's a 21 Savage (laughs) flow that gets stuck in a Euclid song. Got it. No, like I just put up, um, I just put up like a bullshit black and white video on TikTok of a breakdown that I wrote. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, fun fact, that was the first song that I actually composed the instrumental and did the vocals for myself for Euclid. That would be my first, like, actual contribution. Hell but yeah. Hell yeah. Um, So the breakdown is uh, like a – it's a chunk pattern. It's a not complex one, but it is not simple either. And you would think, like, the way that the pattern goes, it's very bouncy, and you would want to be, like, kind of riding over the mm-hmm. – the four like ba 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 ba, but I was like thinking back to how 
rappers will take that ba 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 like mm-hmm. you know how it uh, bounces back and forth and i just wrote a flow over that and uh or with that in mind and it came out pretty cool i think <laughs> um i really enjoyed it and like i kind of like implicating that like bouncy back and forth uh rhythmic feel to my vocals uh, i will be doing that a lot for the new material i didn't really do it too much for revilement do you still but, find yourself diving back into i seem like the white chapels is your home it's your your oh, childhood yeah. teenage years oh, yeah. do you still find yourself diving into that well of 10 years of music that got you here or is it kind of new and temporary like yeah how much are you in the, the, in the classics and the stuff that got you here and how much are you in the the new stuff that you like having the windows down listening to um I would say, truthfully, it is about 98% new mm-hmm. stuff. Same. Um, my roots are my roots. Those will never go. And I feel like it's like riding a bike. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what, like, I mean, I I listen to Whitechapel, obviously, but I could go a year without listening to a Whitechapel mm-hmm. song and play a song from like 2005 and yeah. know every single word, the cadence of his voice, the tones, delivery, everything. Yep. And uh, I will never forget that stuff. So I feel like it's ingrained in me mm-hmm. and it allows me to listen to new stuff and absorb yeah. new like information and context to yep. utilize for building off of that old um, influence, I guess. There is yeah, like the foundation in, in tapping into that old thing and rediscovering something that yeah, I hadn't noticed on the first listen through. I think I always find myself like I'm like you where it's 98% new stuff that I would argue is bullshit. Like it's not stuff that I'm going to listen to for a long right. time. It's just this is what is amusing me today and yeah. I'll let it play as white noise. I think I should or I do try to make an effort to invest more time into that 2%. Uh, and so for me, like obviously now everything's on Spotify, but on my phone, I still have in like the, the Apple Music all the songs from pre like 2018, right before, whenever I started using Spotify, all the stuff I had ripped from YouTube and downloaded from iTunes, like all that stuff is there's over 2000 some odd songs. Yep. And I try once in a while, just put that on shuffle and just let the stuff that got me here play. Yeah. And I don't quite know why, but it seems like it, it's crazy to, to kind of bury that and not live in the stuff that got me here. And I think also I need new ideas, but I don't know. I've been investing in this idea of like, I should keep exploring those because there's, gems there that i will now appreciate differently and yes. re-understand and i'm curious and how those will come back out of me i guess like yeah, it, yeah. it seems if i love them so much then like let's keep mining them from information it's dumb to put them away and just focus on the new yeah bullshit. yeah yeah well it's like comparing notes yeah you know um information you're always going to be downloading information you're always going to yeah. be building off of uh just it's like a foundation you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's quite literally all it is um you have to go back to your roots every once in a while. I feel like it's natural. And I feel like it's not also like a conscious, conscious thing to like do the split. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like I've been listening to a lot of new music recently. I should listen to, you know what I mean? Like you're going to innately choose to go back and listen to those. For me, it is a very direct split. It is a very intentional thing. Like, am I going to, it's, it's like shook to me. I almost look at it as like eating a cookie versus eating a steak. It's like I okay. want to eat cookies all the time, but I know that once in a while I have to put a steak in the oven because I can't live off cookies forever. Yeah. And that's the music to me. It's like I like listening to this bullshit bad rap, but I know that if all I do is listen to this, dude, I'm going to fuck myself so bad. Yeah, I can. And I have yeah. to put sustenance in there. Yeah, I And that's understand. where the, my intentional split comes in of like, yeah, I don't know, there's something fun and uh, exciting about it, but I have to go like, what is Lorna Shore done? Like I have to make a conscious effort to be like, what does that album sound like? Because yeah. I wouldn't have heard it otherwise. And yeah, not that yeah. I don't like them. I think they're great. I just what I listen to all day is not that somehow that's yep. work associated and I just can't live in someone else's work. Mode yeah. all time. It's funny. Like, um, <clears throat> I have to like, I have to discover a band that I'm going to listen to naturally. Mm-hmm. I have to like hear it and yeah. it has to hit the right chords and it has to really strike something in me for me yeah. to be like, <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so I don't listen oh, to yeah. a lot of new, new, new material mm-hmm. um, because I am very biased to like my mm-hmm. standards kind of. So if they fall within my checklist, uh, yep. <laughs> then you will be added to the list. But, yep. you know, otherwise I, you know, it's very seldom that I really do add like copious mm-hmm. amounts of new music. I do tend to just stick <laughs> not like old, old stuff, yep. but like bands that I found like five, 10 years ago, bands that I found two, three years ago and then this past summer you yep. know it's very few but they have been added i also i i don't know what it is i still have like the the, <laughs> the hipster dickhead thing of like 
I can't listen to Sleep Token yet. Like in five years, I'm going to go back and listen to Sleep Token and be like, I missed out so bad. Yeah. But right now, I just like, I can't bring myself to like yeah, type dude, in I'm Sleep Token way. and click I'm on it. It's way. like, I'm sure I love it. I'm I sure tried. it's so sick. I just somehow like all the conver- like I don't I can't listen to bad omens anymore. Like somehow all yeah. the conversation it's like I love that album. It's a great album, but I'm sure I will love it again in ten years. Yeah. But at the moment I just can't bring myself to like yeah, enjoy dude. the party somehow. No, I, and I don't know why. That's so dumb, right? Like just I, like what I like. Who cares? I, but, yeah, I don't I don't know why. Yeah. I, I'm the exact same yeah. way. Um I just remember that they dropped uh Sleep Token put out a song called Euclid. <laughs> so whenever I did it, I was like Little butt hurt whenever I saw like someone was just like, oh, I thought this was sleep token. Like, all right, all right, like I get it, but fuck you. That's you know what so I mean? Funny. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I, I no desire. <laughs> I I did listen to them. I it's just not yeah. not my forte. Yeah, you know, and you would think I like Carmen Jaca. You'll understand when I make the comparison. Yeah, relatively similar to a degree. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just. Sleep token. Maybe that's the hipster in me where I'm just like, this doesn't tickle my fancy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get, yeah, I don't Maybe get, I'm just being a wiener about it. I don't know. It makes no, all, the only thing I could just, the only way I could explain it is that, yeah, I'm just being a wiener about it. But yeah, like, yeah. that doesn't make sense. Like, there has to be something more there. And I don't, I don't know what that is. But whatever. Neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to go to uh, Dusk the other day. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Dusk, was it officially sold out? Was it the 95% sold out where it like felt sold yeah, out? Yeah, it was it technically sold out. I feel like it would have been sold out if the people that were outside were inside. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So there were people that were outside. You remember. Yep. Um, it was actually really cool. Uh, shout out to Dusk mm-hmm. for uh, letting us throw the show there. But um, yeah, it was really, it was wicked cool because it's on like this back road in Providence mm-hmm. and uh, they have these big bay windows and when they opened the windows up, dude, I remember I was like outside smoking a cigarette and I was just like, it's really clear. Oh <laughs> shit. The windows open, dude. And then like, as you're watching the bands, you're seeing people like you were one of them mm-hmm. just like monkeying on the, yep. on the windowsills, <laughs> like just watching, getting pictures and shit. I was like, yo, this dude, is sick. I saw him open that window and my brain got so happy of like, Oh, that's perfect. That is exactly where I want the camera to be. Cause the other key there is to me that it looks away from the door so it looks at like the crowded part of the room yeah 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 uh, i love that viewpoint and it it took me straight back in point beach uh clubhouse the good old days there's yes. a fridge in the back of the venue yep in the that exact was spot, same dude. corner of the stage that basically. was your spot and i lived on top of that fridge yep. and it brought me um and right until the window opened up i had this like warmth come over me of like oh that was a good little place to <laughs> yeah be. yeah um my curiosity <coughs> with dusk is i was watching you guys kind of get on stage i'm obviously i've never played a show right like i i can imagine so much of it but there's so much of it that is completely foreign to me yeah uh, and as i was watching it i was i'm kind of amused of like there's there's a time where you guys are just about all set up and there's five minutes of tinkering and sound checks before the show starts and everyone's kind of like stretching their fingers stretching out little stuff and doing these little things and i'm i'm it makes me happy. It's like, oh, they're loose. Like they've already played. Like that, they don't need more stretches. That's just anxiety. That's just their yeah. brain being like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do something. Yeah. And somehow it was like almost heartwarming to me. Of like, oh, I had always thought that was like a, a genuine warm up. And after being with you guys all night, it's like, no, you were warm up in the back room. You were already loose. Like there's yeah. no need to warm up there. What's going through your head in those like five minutes pre-show? As you, I think you were kind of yeah, pause, kind of taking a minute to yourself, like. What is that five minutes? Is it, oh, fuck, this is about to happen? Is there a, a lyrics that you're like, don't fuck up these these lyrics? Is, yeah, like, what are those five minutes pre-show like? I like that question, Okay, first of all. Thank you. Because I've never thought about it. Interesting, okay. Um, going back to Dusk, I genuinely could not tell you yeah. what I was thinking. Um, it seems like a really dissociative moment. That's fascinating to me to yeah. be like... I think of it, and when I watch sports and I watch them sit and listen to the national anthem before, I often have the same thought of like, what do you think in that moment? Because the national anthem part can't sink in. Like, it's not really sinking in that I'm playing for the US of A. You're just sitting there on the cusp of like, oh, fuck. And I'm always amused and really interested in the player's faces in that. I think you can learn a lot about what's about to happen by the energy of people in that. Yeah. And I think with a band, it's a similar thing. And yeah, I was just curious of, yeah, what do you, what do you digest in there? What is Kevin's version of that moment? I think there's a picture that one of my buddies, Kyle, um, took a picture of me and I was mm-hmm. like down, like just kind of like just scratching my arm and like I was mm-hmm. looking at the stage and whatever. And I do remember in that moment, at least uh, I was just thinking about uh, 
shit, I, I'm, I'm really actually trying. And I, I'm glad you asked that because I'm really trying to be Is able to a- like vocalize what I was thinking. It's hard to explain, but it's like an evaluation period. Okay. What have I done to this point? Mm-hmm. How did I do last time? What am I going to do this time? And then there is 100% a period where I don't think of anything Mm -hmm. and I clear my head. The only thing that matters is I have a microphone in my hand. Mm -hmm. I have a role and I need to um, just do my best perform and just have fun, you know, because I feel like my, our first show was rough because I, again, like I had not been sober on a stage before, um, it was my first time being on stage sober in six years, mind you. And um, it was a little intimidating, obviously, you know, course, yeah, it, yeah. naturally. But the second show at the dusk, I felt like j- that much closer to that confident That's front exciting. man that I used to be. And like every time I'm going to go back up there, there's going to be just a larger and larger I guess block added to the top that's going to get me closer to that point where I'm going to be, you know, I feel like that block's going to be here and where I was was here and I'm just going to continue, you know, I'll be better than, yeah, it is exciting. And I kind of also reflect on that. It's like today I'm going to do better than I did last time Mm -hmm. and I'm going to reflect on that afterwards and I'm going to do the same thing the next time I go and play. And like, Dude, the next time we go to play is a big deal Mm -hmm. because it's 50-50. It's you do well, you get some attention. You bomb, you got to buck up, mister. It's going to be a bumpy ride. I heard a comedian say one time that every good show buys you one more show. So every time that like at the Euclid show at dusk, like everyone who went there and enjoyed dusk enjoyed euclid sorry yep. is now going to come back to another euclid show at some right. point in time right? right and the the goal then is as you play the webster now that instead of being whatever 200 people are at dusk now you have a chance of a thousand people making that yeah. gamble of seeing you guys another time and it was a really interesting kind of way to think about growth practically of like yeah it is not yeah the band doesn't grow and like new people flock in it's like no all these people come back and they come back with a new friend next time right and it's just that you they had a good enough time here that you put something in them or a new clip post it might be the next show it could be a show in three years right this is where the long game comes back like we don't know when they're going to come back not you're right that show went well enough that they will come back yeah Uh, and i've used my business card example of this of like i gave a business card to everyone at the palladium for so many years with the same thing of like i don't know who you are and when i'm going to need you but like it's if i do this enough times you won't forget me at some right. point i will exist in your memory yeah. and that's worth something yeah and there's uh, your empire dude that's yeah, building your empire to some degree. you know uh which is a great segue then of uh i've had this, the the thought of like how do we be proud of the things we've done and also be still hungry for the things we're doing and i think uh it, you're a great example of a great version of person to talk to where it's like there is the construct paradise legacy and that is worth something and yeah to me it's like photographing local sh- local shows and local uh bands where it's like when we were showing up at dusk, the the door guy there, uh, I went to pay and he goes, don't worry about it. You shot my band a couple years ago. Come on in. Uh, and that means so much to me because it's not the 10 bucks that I care. Right. Like I don't, whatever. But the, I always forget how many people I'm taking photos of. Yeah. And when I have that moment, it makes me go, Oh fuck. There's so many guys like him that I have no idea about anymore. Yeah. Who, I have provided a good service to, and that still means something to them. And that's a really valuable thing for me is like a, yeah, this isn't in vain. This is doing something. It is affecting right. something. There is right. some ripple. And it comes happening. back full circle. Uh, and I think it's a beautiful thing, but I also can't like, I, I feel like I'd be dumb to sit here and go, I shot a lot of local scenes in Connecticut. Like <laughs> who gives a fuck, right? Like there's yeah. this weird thing of like, I want to be proud of that. And I want to be grateful of that. But it's also like, who fucking cares, man? There's still so much left to be done. Yeah. As a, a for you, you could, it's like, yeah, how do you be grateful of Construct Paradise? Of like, I still listen to suspended animation once a month, right? It's still like in my brain. Once Fire. in a while, I still wake up and there's a part of lucid dream or crystal stuck in my brain. And yeah, once in a while in my dive down memory lanes, like that EP still comes up, right? And it's among a few local EPs with Forget Tomorrow and um, current EP and probably in an honor of EP and Set Sail at Sunrise is my, yeah, yeah. my meta. Um, but it's like, it's in a really elite class to me of EPs that have stood the test of time. How on earth are you proud of that and still hungry of Euclid? And like, if you forget it, you're doing yourself a disservice. But if all you do is bask in like suspended animation, it's like, well, yeah, it, you didn't tour Europe on it. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. It, it was like, you know, at the time, the attention that I had gotten from it, 
that was the only experience of mm-hmm. um like feedback or like attention yeah. or anything from music so like for me that was a big deal um back then and uh i did hold on to that for a while mm-hmm. um i still do um i it's kind of cool because like i'll go to venues and um people re- like recognize me mm-hmm. and i like i don't look anything like i used to yeah so, you know. I know what you're saying, but yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, you know, like after six, do my, I mean, my hair is gone. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but either way, uh, people would pick me out. They'd yeah. be like, yo, you yeah. were the, you know, whatever. I'm just like, holy shit, dude. Like, yeah. And uh, still to this day, I'll be out in public, not mm-hmm. even at a venue and uh, talk to people. And they're just like, um, but now with Euclid, now it's that. Now mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, you're the Euclid vocalist, you mm-hmm. know, and there's another part of it that keeps me hungry. Yeah. And this is actually my favorite part, believe it or not. Um, I am outgoing. I'm an uh, extrovert. I don't have any issue, you know, being social with anybody in any situation. But there's a level of respect that I feel that I've kind of gained over time. Mm-hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. But when it was Construct Paradise and we'd be at a venue everyone's talking everyone's circling around me everyone's this that and the third you know always euclid shows they leave me alone i walk around and i get the (laughs) the looks and like i fuck with that you know what i mean because it's like he was like oh that's the guy you know what i mean and uh that builds the hunger big time that's like no dude like i if if someone else is going to consider me the big deal. I need to fucking be the big deal. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And uh, that's been really pushing me to like, that's why I've been making more content. That's why I've been going hard um, on my fitness journey and like all that other stuff, because like it's, it's self-preservation and yeah. it's me building up my own self-respect and then marketing that out with, you know, hobbies and what have you music and other yeah. facets of things. But in return for all of that hard work, I have a tangible reaction yeah. as feedback. That is what pushes me to do well. And it's validated, right? We all want validation. It's why we're all on stage. And we're I'm humans, not literally man. on stage, but yeah, yeah it's it the is same what it thing. is. And you know, no one, anyone yeah. that says they're above that is a liar or they're insecure. Everyone requires a oh, little man. validation. I am staring at myself in the mirror here because I always say I don't care about the views. And that's true. Uh, I'm laughing because as I say that, it's me. I'm realizing it's me trying to be a cool guy. I'm like, yeah, I don't even care. Yeah. And in hindsight, it's like, no, it's just that views aren't where I valid, where I take validation from. Where I take validation Absolutely. from is from you guys and from my peers. And uh, it's a really interesting, like, aha moment to me of like, oh, I don't care about views because that doesn't validate anything. My validation right. comes from my peers and from you guys. And that is the part that I'm interested in. And we all do want validation, right? That's ultimately why we're doing something we're yeah, doing yeah. anything uh and i think it's yeah ah uh, that's a fucking interesting moment for me of like yeah that's the part i care about i, I don't care about views because i that's not the part that means anything to me and yeah. i think uh probably with euclid is a similar thing of like yeah walking through the venue means something but what will be most exciting is when carnifex sees you guys and if they go oh we saw that river pig video that was sick dude right you know and like there, there's levels to this game i guess yeah, there. i would i um, would play it cool yeah i'd be like oh thanks dude dap them up and then i would go in the back in the fetal position and be like oh my god dude you know <laughs> like that would be a real real humbling yeah. moment for sure yeah um and i think on the inverse side of that it's so important to remember that like you are someone's carnifex and i am someone's carnifex yeah and uh, we're very small fish i think as i say that i'm scared to sound like we're getting big for our bridges and it's like no i think we've done something and in this very small pond we're one step above a bottom feeder right like, yeah, yeah yeah if nothing else uh and so if, if that's the case then like um we are the carnifex to someone else and it's important then to give that feedback back and yeah. to to take a moment to whoever opened the show for me there's a yeah a local photographer i had a moment with and it's important for me to take a moment and hear them out and give them that feedback and try and pay it forward because yeah i think i forget or we forget how much that current effect and i I don't know why i've settled on their name as my example today but fuck it uh why that endorsement means so much but it does and as you're headlining the shows of euclid as i'm selling music videos it's like oh we have some tiny percentage of that ability to ripple that same love and support back out i think it's a yeah something i've tried to be more mindful and intentional with of like join the community and support the community because we can't 
Yeah. Because we're finally in a position to support the community. Yeah, well, I mean, if you also, like, think about where we came from, yeah. right? We all started going to shows, and then we all were the weird kids that yeah. congregated into, like, a group mm -hmm. and broke off, made bands, yeah. and then this guy quit, <laughs> you know, bands here, there, whatever. You know, we all intermingled, and then throughout the course of, I mean, what I started going to shows when I was, like, 16. So for half of my life, pretty mm -hmm. much, um, I've been going to shows and, you know, six years out of that, I wasn't going for a while, but think about where you started Yeah. and <laughs> where, for example, you're yeah. in Providence, you walk up yeah. on a whim, you're just like, Hey, I'm coming to your show. We're just like, fuck. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to take pictures too. Double fuck. Yeah. Yep. And then you walk up and the guy's like, Pete, pff, you're not paying tonight, dude. And you're just like, why? You know what I mean? Like we don't realize that yeah. we've actually had an effect in how you said, yep. We are someone else's carnifex. You know, I think that is what our jobs are in this yeah. scene is to like, we're the old guys. You know, there's a bunch of new yeah. kids. Like, don't shit on the new kids, man. Yeah. Don't shit on the new kids. Support those kids. Go to their shows. Yeah. Um, I need to be better about doing that. I probably will um, towards the end of this year. But, you know, those kids want to know that you're, that you give a shit and mm -hmm. that you want to know. Because when we were up there on the stage, those were the bands that we cared about. Like mm -hmm. I remember I used to love when Chris uh, or Brian was, I was just about to say that they I was would be just at a, at a show. show and Brian showed up and it felt like the whole venue changed. And it was yeah. like, a. it doesn't mean uh, he had a night to sacrifice, right? I don't want to say it meant nothing to him, but like he was just going to a show to see some music. He liked those yeah, friends yeah. playing, but it did mean something to everyone else there. It's like, Oh fuck. Yeah. If he cares enough to be here, then this is yeah, somewhere yeah. worth being. Well, I remember we played a VFW, I believe in Southington. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, three of the, well, not, I'm not including myself, but two of the vocal heavy hitters out of new England were at that show, um, Ben and Brian. And, um, at the time we were all still like, again, currents was playing VFW shows and stuff, you know? And, uh, <laughs> that's such a hard set. To I know, believe now. I know it's wild ben but, as well. Yeah. Um, I remember, uh, we played our set, Ben did his guest feature mm -hmm. and Brian, Obviously, the Currents was headlining, and Brian was like, you know, give it up for Construct Paradise, two of my favorite vocalists out of the scene. Like, you guys are fucking awesome kind mm -hmm. of deal. And I was just like, damn, man. Like, you know, that's that's Brian. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I've Brian's my boy. Like, you know, we may not talk often, but I've always had a lot of respect for him. And we did yeah. do uh, this random track, actually, like, way back in the day. Me, Ben, Chris, and uh, – oh, that was it, actually. Me, Ben, Chris, and Brian Jesus. at Chris's house. And uh, Jesus. it's on his it's on his SoundCloud, actually. Like, <laughs> dude, this is before any of those bands like blew up. Right. And that was actually before Brian was even in Currents. Yep. But when Brian joined and like yeah. I had already had so much respect for Currents, like essentially, yeah, like Brian being like that and then seeing where he ended up, you know, it's a little bit of like, you know, regardless of what he thinks of me now, I'm trying to to work up to his level mm -hmm. of, you know professionalism because he's killing it dude like he is one of the yep. most high regarded um yep. musicians uh out of the and scene right now euclid is effectively selling out vfws right like euclid is now where currents was when brian said that yeah which is the other wild interesting to piece think of about that, of like how much that resonated with you and i think i actually never thought of that i yeah i guess for me it's like if uh, I look at I have the same thing with music videos. I'm trying to pick my words here, but I, I look at people and it's like, oh, fuck, when I was looking up to them, they are where I am now. And yeah. that doesn't mean that where I am now is worth something. Maybe, like it, it does two things, right? It means that one, when I was a kid and looking up, it's like, oh, they weren't as far ahead as you thought. And yeah. two, it's like, oh, I'm now further ahead than I thought I was. Right. And I think both of those right. are good pieces of feedback of like, yeah, we don't always know what other people are doing. We don't know where things are going to go. And right. we also don't know. Yeah, how other people see us and where we fit in the the landscape yeah, of stuff. Yeah, um, and it's an interesting interesting game trying to be a part of there. Yeah, I've actually never thought of it that way. Yeah, to be quite honest, but this is the first time, and it is kind of interesting to think yeah. about it that way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, Dusk is whatever 150 kids, I think was the number, something yeah. like that, and that's about a VFW. I assume that the yeah. 17 VFW is not too different from that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dude, and it, and it being our second show too, that was also like. I, dude, you know what's funny? When we were walking around the venue, I actually kind of felt like I was like, do we deserve this right now mm -hmm. kind of deal? Because it was like, it's our second show. Yep. You know, and, you know, obviously the bands that we played with, they're homies and, and everything. And by the way, they killed it that night. Um, that was a sick show, yeah. Yeah, those bands were sick. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I, I kind of felt like when we were in the venue, I was walking around and I was getting the the looks. I was like, How? why? You know what I mean? Mm. Like we in my head, we're still nobodies. Yep. And uh, I just, I guess that's feel, you know what I mean? That's kind of like, how far do I have to go before I feel that I'm at that level? Uh, that is a, I have that same thought and that same question of, yeah, how, what do you have to do in life to feel like how we think Tom Brady feels, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, yeah. what do you have to do? And what I've loved is I heard someone, I wish I could source where I heard this from, because uh, it's not my thought, but it was someone else's idea of like, Eventually, if this kind of imposter syndrome thing of like, I'm not good enough, you just end up getting into slowly bigger and bigger rooms going, do I belong to be here until finally you're in the room with staying next to Taylor Swift and whoever are the other number ones in the world going, I don't belong to be here. Yeah. And they're all looking at you saying the same fucking thing, right? Yeah. Taylor Swift is probably sitting in the NFL stadium going, I sold this out, but like, why does my talent matter? Right. These yeah. guys are bringing people happiness. I'm just saying, I don't know, whatever, whatever. I don't know. It's hard to imagine whatever insecurity is in her head, but I'm sure she's sitting there in the press box watching the Chiefs play. There's some version of her going like, fuck, did I do the right thing? Yeah. And that's human. That's normal. And yeah, it's yeah. so uh, hard also for me to be like, yeah, I've recently tried to make the shift of like, there isn't a music video I'm going to put out that'll make me happy. Yeah. The process will make me happy. I enjoy it. I love the thing. I, right. And I assume it's the same with songs. It's like, it's like you love making songs, but there's not a version of River Pig that makes you euphoric for the rest of your yeah. life right like, yeah yeah it yeah. just is what it is and it's gonna have some ups and some downs and that's and you have to love the process and i've tried to find peace in that of like okay if it's not if there's not a super bowl i'm gonna win that'll make me happy then what is happiness right what does that yeah. look like and that's a, a much harder and scarier question to answer and i think it's much easier for me to say okay i'll just focus on winning the super bowl and if i win the super bowl i'll be happy and if i don't then i'll figure it out yeah and it's like man that's that's gambling on winning the lottery that's like, I'm going to win the lottery or else. It's like, yeah. don't do that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. what is happiness and where does that fit in? And I don't know. I don't know if anyone has any good answer for that, but it's an interesting thing yeah, it to is. worth be aware of, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Of, it yeah, is for sure. There's not a moment where it'll be, aha, okay. Did yeah, it. yeah. I don't think there will be. No. I don't think there will be because like, I feel like also if you like put a cap at where, oh, I'll be satisfied here. Hmm. Um, like the, going back to the example of like the blocks when I was talking about how my performance at construct paradise, like mm -hmm. I think my last show with them, I was like 21 and, um, or 22. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was like, just like peak wasted everywhere. You know what I mean? So like how good really was I, Yep. you know, how good could I have gotten mm -hmm. in that state? And I feel like, you know, there's a lot of variables involved with being a front man. I feel like my stage presence was a little bit more confident back then just due to the fact that I just, it didn't phase me at all. I was yeah. fucking, you know, I barely even knew I was there. Yep. But, um, and you know, doing it now, I, I feel like getting above that, at least the bare minimum. Cause that's what I would classify it as is like the bare minimum. I feel like I'll get there probably like, if not the next, like this upcoming show, the one after that, mm -hmm. I will probably be at that level of where I was when I was 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is where I'm excited to at least start there because that, at, at, like, I kind of had that cap set. Mm -hmm. So once I overcome that cap, it's like, well, what else is there? Yeah. Yeah. Has stage you're, been. Oh, no. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, you're, you're getting me uh, real real deep today. Hell yeah. You're asking me things that I like really haven't thought about. Yo, big Saturday at 1230 in the afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> like, let's dive deep Blowing into the Blowing my psyche. mind right now. Let's find it all in there, Hell big yeah, boy. Hell yeah, um, What should we call it? Uh, what was my one other thing I wanted to chat on here? Um, one uh, quick sobriety note, then I want to get into the fitness stuff. Um, but yeah, one quick question is, like, like last time we chatted, you were looking ahead to the shows and assuming you're going to be more present and just uh, energetic, yeah, more, more, more better on stage. What's the word I'm looking for? There? I don't know. Uh, more professional on stage, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, has that been kind of your feedback or your results in the last six months? Like, has it gone about as well as you hoped it would? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that I've done as well as I would like to. What could be better? Um, I think just like visually, I looked, at least in the first show, I looked uh, like not confident at all. Interesting. Um, I picked up zero of that, but of course, yeah. Yeah, it's like different things. Yeah. Um, 
at least like my own way, mm-hmm. like looking at it, I just I felt like I looked not confident. But it's like in my head while we were playing, like I wasn't unconfident with what I could do with my voice. Yep. It was more so like, how do I look? Do I look like a vocalist? Yep. Yep. Do I look like a dork? You know what I mean? Like, and I definitely looked like a dork, at least in my opinion. And uh, the second show we did it. Um, I didn't feel as much pressure nearly as mm-hmm. the first show. I was kind of like getting it, the best way I can describe it. You go out to a show. Maybe it's a five hour drive or you're going on a vacation. It's a five hour drive. And when you're using your GPS and then you get to like, for me, it would be um, uh, route 291. When I get onto route 291, or 84 even, if I know which direction of 84 sure. I'm on and I start getting towards like where, and I turn my blue, or uh, um, GPS off. Yes. When I turn my GPS off, that's like that comfortable, like, oh, yeah. I know where I am kind of feeling. Oh, yeah. But I'm not home yet. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I felt at dusk. It was okay. like, I just turned off the GPS, but I'm not home. Yep. You know? So. That's interesting. Okay. I like that. I might, I might be home the next show. But That's I might not be. Yeah. I might be just getting on to 291 from 84. I don't know. Yeah. And sometimes we move. Sometimes home yeah. moves. And sometimes there's traffic along the way. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Any it might be an there. accident or something. I don't know. I got to wait. That's an interesting piece there about the uh, filming your first set. And I think that's... Uh, I, I she killed that, by the way. Comedians. I definitely want to do that again. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'd love to. Uh, my, I think it's an interesting thing for you guys to have as feedback and for you to then assess this and for you to assess it based on your first show, where I think normally bands do that after they've been playing shows for years and kind of develop habits and routines. And it's like right. you guys got to assess and optimize before you had a chance to build any bad habits or anything you didn't love. You had a chance to yeah really review and dive into all of it. I think that's a really interesting, interesting thing that I hadn't quite figured out ahead of time, right? I think when we were filming that, we were talking that it's just good to be aware of. It's good to hear. It's good to see. But like, I don't think we quite knew all of why it was so good. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to hear you guys say, I assume that the other guys in the band have done a similar thing of watching themselves perform and go, ah, fuck, we didn't do this right. Or we should have done this. They ripped me apart too. um, I I disagree. I think you guys did great. Like I don't mean to support that part of it, but I think it's a really valuable exercise of like, It being able to, and again, I hear comedians say like filming your set sucks, like listening to yourself, watching yourself, like it stinks, but it is a really valuable thing to No, it is. That's what everyone else sees, right? Like yeah. whatever you think happened on stage is one of one. No one else in the room has any right. sense of that. Right. And there is another perspective that it's very obvious that everyone else shares that you are completely ignorant to, except for that yep. camera. Yeah. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, I want to touch on fitness before we get up on it out of here, because I think it's a new a new path for you. Yeah. Uh, the the fitness obsession has been through the cal- calisthenics, through body weight. Uh, where fitness is interesting to me is that our body is the only vessel that we have to take with us forever. Uh, and it's interesting that you're, yeah, taking that on. I assume it's kind of an extension of sobriety, of bettering yourself, of yeah. wellment, of making life better. Uh, has the, the fitness then, like, empowered the vocal stuff more? Where, like, by adding in discipline, routine, and structure to this one thing, it now forces you to do the same thing with vocals? Yeah, so I... I've always been in and out of the gym Mm -hmm. over like, I mean, even since like high school, right? I never took it seriously. I didn't really know enough. I just kind of thought like, pick it up, put it down. I'm going to get jacked. Like it does, it doesn't work like that. Um, And I feel like, you know, for a really long time, um, I didn't have control over my life. And when I started to gain that control, um, first and foremost, it was just a level of like, uh, I had said before evaluation, I kind of just went through a period where I was like, all right, dude, I put the substances down. Like my life still sucks though, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, there, there are certain things like, unfortunately I put myself in a situation. I'm sure there's tons of people that have struggled with this issue themselves where within that laundry list of shit that I had mentioned in the previous podcast, Mm -hmm. it gets so overwhelming and you kind of just like can't control like how you react to those things. And that's like where your first set of strength comes from is like learning how to control those things. Like, yeah, unfortunately, dude, like I made my bed. I have to lie in it. I'm going to be dealing with this issue for however long it takes. I can't run away from it. I can't. I'm not repeating the same issues, you know, over and over again. Um, so that was a waiting game. Mm-hmm. But there's no tangible feedback for me to like actually see like. Oh, I'm I'm fixing you know these back end of uh, issues in my life, yep. 
and I wanted something that I could see. Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. And um, fitness was always like kind of a thing, but um, in the past, like, I think it was like my birthday, March. Um, I had a buddy of mine, Austin. Um, he, uh, I'm gonna plug him. His name is uh, Whammy W H X A M I. Uh, he just put out a new album. It is fire. Oh, yeah. um, he's a very talented artist, does all of his own stuff. Um, very good. But that kid is in incredible shape, and he put himself, you know, he really took the time and discipline. And mm -hmm. I remember seeing him as, like, a younger kid, and he was just, like, you know, like a kid. Like, But then I saw him again, and I was like, wow, dude, you look real good. You know, he's mm -hmm. just like, come to the gym with me, bro. And I was like, ah, do I have time for that? Yep. Like, ah, I don't know. But I remember, like, I just woke up every day and like looking in the mirror, I was still like, you know, I looked pregnant. I had no fucking chest. <laughs> My arms were like wrists. I was like, dude, fucking... nothing wrong with wrists and arms. <laughs> but like, I was just like, dude, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, there's like, and I didn't have the willpower yep. to like fix that. You know what I mean? Cause I yeah. knew like, it's going to take a long time, mm -hmm. but that was also with the limited understanding. And within that, also, it's like, but also the other things that I'm going through are going to take a long time. So, mm -hmm. like, why not process. do both? Yep. And, like, not just that, but, like, to really see and yield results with a fitness journey, whatever it may be, everyone's goals are different, right? Mm -hmm. um, mine changed, like, three or four times from when I started. I didn't know. I still don't know. I just changed the other day. I just decided maybe I don't want to fucking gain 220 pounds. Or, you know what I mean? better like, and healthier. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, I just feel different, you know, yeah. than I did last month. Um, I just kind of felt like, uh, let's take it seriously this time. Mm -hmm. Because if my life is not getting better based on decisions that I've made, if I go to the gym the way that I had before, I'm not going to get the same results. If I want to see results, I'm going to have to put my foot down and, you know, put the horse blinders on and learn, research, do mm -hmm. do my diligence and figure out what it is that's going to get uh, results. And like that level of discipline and structure mm -hmm. absolutely bled into my other facets of life because I started having a more structured meal plan. I started having a more structured, mm -hmm. uh, like day I get out at a certain time. I had certain, like I was going every day for a solid three months because I figured like the human brain takes roughly 30 days to like reset and develop a new habit, especially if it's a daily habit. Mm -hmm. So I figured like the only possible way I'm going to program this into my head. So I, I don't lose interest is if I go every fucking day. And I did. And um, it, the I, I went for like a month or two, and I didn't really see any results at first. And I was kind of just like, doesn't work. This sucks, dude. Like, what yeah. the hell? I'm eating a lot, and I'm not doing anything. But uh, I'll never forget this one day. I was going to brush my teeth. And I like, had the <laughs> toothbrush in my mouth, and I saw this, like, it's yeah. called the uh, anterior delt. It popped. <laughs> and I had, like, a little crease. Yeah. And I was like. Yo, I got a crease. What do you mean I got a crease, bro? That's sick. I want a crease. I want two creases. Yep. And uh, that was when I started like, I was like, okay, it, it is working. That's when the body does more for you. And then that's where I started delving into TikTok and yeah. doing research and reading articles mm -hmm. and then doing actual research on the topic. Yeah. Um, and then I just fully immersed in the world. Like a stranger who would go on my TikTok algorithm or Instagram algorithm yep. would be like, you hiding some, bro? Because mm -hmm. it's jacked dudes. Yep. Always. That's uh, all it is, bro. Bodybuilders, <laughs> dudes like, oh, you don't want to do this. You want to do this. And it's just like they're always like in a leotard. Like, But you know what, man? Like when you're – if you need to be successful in something, you need to immerse yourself in that world. Absolutely. And, you know, algorithms work very well for that because yep. you can – program your algorithm to give you the information that you need it's it's selective marketing i mean that's yeah. how not trying to get political but that's how the media does their bullshit mm -hmm. based that's on an area that you are from. and what you search for yeah. it's they're gonna market that kind of shit yep. to you so you use it to your advantage yeah. rather than you know disadvantage yeah uh my roommate in college was super into fitness and it really stuck with me of like yeah he was 
I've always described him as like as big as you could get naturally and cleanly and just yeah. doing it the the good ways and just his whole life. He's one of those kids who grew up like super fat and then like got fit in high school. Oh, but yeah. that like fat Those dudes have the best physiques afterwards. 100%. But. Yeah, yeah. He jokes that his, he jokes as a kid, his mom would make him butter and cheese sandwiches. Like that's what he ate like, <laughs> all day, every day. It's like, that adds up. Um, but he was the best. And it really struck with me of like how, how much it takes to get into shape. And it yeah. really changed how I look at people who are in shape of like you're not a meathead like there's a really uh I don't know the meathead is the jock quarterback who never makes it right like the guy who's at the gym and has the results that are obvious it's like there's someone who's there every day that's someone who's counting every meal uh and I living with him I put on 20 pounds of like good muscle in about a year hell yeah uh, which for me is yeah I got 20 pounds to put on anytime yeah Uh, and it was great and that's all since yeah falling off and I'm back to kind of square one again but my uh, my dilemma there was that it felt like it took so much time yeah. uh, and so much effort. That's what a, loses a lot of people, man. And that was where it got interesting to me. It's like, I believe this is worth it, but it's, it feels in vain to me. Like it felt like there are other things I should be diverting yeah. this time into. Yeah. Uh, and I'm always yeah envious of people who can, I think love themselves enough to put all the time into themselves. Or for me, it was like, I'm not like my vessel isn't worth my whole life committed to my vessel should be used to benefit other lives. Yeah. Uh, and I think probably there's something as I think as a, a therapy, therapy brain would argue like, Oh, that's a self-worth issue. Like that's an issue of like self-love and not valuing the vessel enough. Uh, but I would I think, argue that point. Actually, yeah. I don't think that it's a self-worth issue. Yeah. I think that to say that I go to the gym and I do it solely based off of, um, self-love like i mean you have to love yourself to put effort into it you're yeah. absolutely correct about yeah. that but um people that don't see me very often would see me and maybe they would say like oh you look different you know what i mean like you mm-hmm. look like you have been healthier and everything yeah. like that but i see myself every day yeah i still am dissatisfied i'm yeah. still like i gotta do that i gotta do that that's too small that's <laughs> what it is like and it's that was never gonna, really lost me. <laughs> it's never going to be not that. You know, you, mm-hmm. you're you always going to be fighting yourself. You're yeah. always going to be like, why do I even bother? Yep. You know, but it comes down to the fact that, like, there are some days where you look in the mirror and you're not thinking that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's that little window of, like, self-appreciation yeah. where you're just like, all right. You know, like, yep. I, I love going because... What it taught me, truthfully, was like I didn't have a lot of control over my life, Mm -hmm. a lot of other things. And as men, um, there is something chemically in our brain and in our like genetics that we require. Like if you're going to work towards something, you want to see the progress, right? Um, This is probably a terrible analogy. But like let's say you're a woods – like you work with wood. I forget what the term is, but – and you make a really nice ornate table, right? You look at that and you're like, that's pretty nice, but like I could make a better one. And it just sits in a place where no one can see it. You have to invite people over to come and see that validation and whatever. And like that work that it took you to get to that product that you're worth showing, you know, mm-hmm. or you feel is worth showing to you, like that is an item that is stored away and that's nothing that you can bring with you. So like you're the only one on that journey enjoying that process. You're the yeah. only one that yeah. looks at the finished product product and then maybe a stranger here and there might ask hey did you do that and uh like i guess for lack of better term be the table Mm -hmm. like wear that shit you know what i mean like as we i i again it's a horrible analogy but like it's it's a different kind of feeling to go into a place where you're insecure already off rip you feel like you're going to be judged you feel like there's going to be people that or, you know, like to say that no one stares at you or whatever, obviously that happens. Mm-hmm. Whether it's good or bad, irrelevant, doesn't yep. matter. It's You're both there at for all a purpose. Times. Right. Yep. Yeah. But when you watch yourself over the the course of a period of time and you're kind of yep. like seeing that result and you're, you know, whatever, it triggers something in you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, it could be a good or a bad thing. Um, f- personally, for me, like it's therapeutic because that's the only point in my day where I don't think about things that bother me. Yep. That's the only thing that's the only, like, that's what I used it for. I was, I was so like, I would say for the last like year, I was just like really just down on myself and my situation. Mm-hmm. And like, I needed something desperately and like what I was doing wasn't working. 
And uh, so I just picked up going to the gym and then like that, that hour to hour and a half and that like just starting with not being able to do any pull-ups, you know, with like, and I had a back injury a few years ago. So, you know, not having any strength in my back and like all these things, it was kind of one of those, like, do I, do I let my body be this frail or do I fix this? <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, man, it's, it's been a journey. It's been hard. Yeah. It's been hard. It's a lot of self-reflection that goes involved in that, but that self-reflection led to me appreciating myself so much more at the end of the day. Mm. I care about what I eat. Um, I care about my rest. I care about, um, what I do every day, uh, choices that I make situations that I'm in, like, and it changes your, <clears throat> excuse me, your confidence in general. Yeah. That was, I, I picked up on that immediately as I started going that, yeah, it just changes the way you yeah. interface with the world. Uh, and I've always tried to generalize it as like, uh, Saying I have to work out every day somehow felt confining to me, but yeah. I'd like to generalize it as like, I need to do something that's hard every day. And yeah. of course, everything we do is hard in some sense. I don't like, I think to some degree that comes from a place of privilege of like, yeah, I work from home. Like it's pretty easy to cross my hall. Like I don't have to do a lot. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of traffic that I don't have to sit in and a lot of differences there. But like if it's fitness, if it's going for a run, I got into golf this summer. And to me, it's a golf to me is a similar thing. The way you describe fitness of like, nothing matters out here it's just me and this ball and i just gotta figure out how to put this ball in the hole i gotta yeah, figure yeah. Out how to pick this thing up and put it down and like there's progress there and there's growth and it's the same uh game of inches of technique of optimizing yep. it and you see the people who've been there their whole life and you see the guy who looks like he should be able to lift a thousand pounds pick up a hundred pounds and you know vice versa both yeah. of them are mind-blowing totally. to you uh and yeah i think that's the similar thing i've had with golf and just yeah trying to do something hard something that makes you uncomfortable something that makes you go something that's like objective and uh, I think in art, it's so easy to like compare ourselves. And I assume part of fitness is like the dumbbells, 50 pounds everywhere, a hundred percent of the time for everyone, right? Yeah. There's no room for bullshit in your head because it's very objective. And for me with golf, I had a similar thing of like the ball's in the hole or it's not <laughs> like, yeah, there's yeah. no room for like, Oh, Oh, there's no excuses, right? Like there's yeah. just no, no room. I hit the ball yeah. or I did not. Yep. Um, and that's been a really freeing thing of like just making sure that in every day and sometimes it's a walk. I've been doing hill sprints, like yeah. just doing something that makes me uncomfortable and unhappy is a really valuable thing to like make everything else happy. Yeah. And well, it's it's just a level of um, I don't want to say self-respect because um, you can self-respect. You can have yeah. self-respect and not, sure. you know, delve into that realm. Yeah. But uh, genetically, yeah, we are predisposed to build strength. Mm -hmm build strength, provide, um, and be territorial. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's at the very core of what men are, your subconscious thoughts when you're walking into a new social setting and whatever, all of those things are the first things that pop into your head, whether yeah. you, you know, and you, you either are confident enough to withhold yourself to a level to establish a certain status when you walk into that room or you fall back and you, you know, yeah. don't. You know, there's nothing wrong with either way. It just depends on the role that you want to fill. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like to be a person that I would like, I would like respect. I respect everyone else around me. I would like to have my own, Yeah. you know, so I, I I'm not saying I f go to the gym so people respect me, but like yeah. I do it to respect myself and yep. in turn me respecting myself, and that, yeah, that energy will out. come back to me, Brilliant. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's absolutely a, a also like, just discipline. Mm -hmm. If you lack discipline, you know, parts of your life aren't going to do well, you mm -hmm. know, and you, you don't make the correlation all the time. And again, it doesn't yep. have to be fitness, but, um, mine's been reading just to like taking completely out of uh, body. I think everyone who's smarter than me reads and like, I don't know how true that like, whatever, <laughs> I, I'm half joking when I say that, but I am half serious when I say that. Uh, but for me, this started a thing of like every day I set a timer for 10 minutes and I open a fucking book. Dude, I don't have to like it. Awesome. I don't have to read more than a page. Sometimes I literally read a page and I read a paragraph four times. Right. But like, yeah. it's this idea of like, I can't be comfortable. I have to do things that make me uncomfortable that enrich me. And I think in the context of fitness, I'm thinking of someone who's like, my leg's broken. And it's like, well, that's okay. Let's talk and sit on the couch, fix your leg, open your book, find knitting, like yeah, figure yeah, yeah. out something that is something you can do for 10 minutes. That's hard and forces yep. you to take on something new. And that ripples out and benefits in other places right. of life, whether it's, yeah, your biceps that are growing or the size of the sweater you can make. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's all the same shit. Yeah, no, point. you're absolutely right. And like, that's, that's the beauty of life. Yeah. The beauty of life is that we're always learning. Yeah. And like learning something from everyone. Oh yeah, bro. Damn. Got it. Bingo, dude. Uh, 
fucking, I have to end on that. I'm sorry, I interrupted you and I cut you off on that, but like, you can't not, you can't not <laughs> capitalize when you capitalize. Nah, dude, that was fire. Uh, we're at an hour 20, so we're doing great. We're past, uh, we're doing great. Uh, guest socials. Kevin, where can people find you online? Uh, they want to tell you that you're cute, that you're awesome, that you did great in life, that uh, they want to tell you that Maddie stinks and that you're better than him at most things in life. Yeah. Uh, which is probably the majority of people. Yeah, I'm even more bald than uh, him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, man. I love you, dude. Uh, I'll see you next time I see you. But yes, Kevin, where can people find you online? What can people look out for? Yeah, Instagram. I'm K dot Lang, L A N G E dot Vox, V O X. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on TikTok, same thing. Um, I'm in the process of actually switching to a new Facebook profile. Hell yeah. I kind of screwed myself because yep. I tried. So I, I made a new profile because uh, I'm just a different person than yep. what I used to be. And I'm not trying to, like, in any way, shape, or form, not have my i downloaded all of the the info from my old facebook page Mm -hmm. but it's all childhood pictures and stuff and like people tagging me in posts and (laughs) some cringe posts of mine and shit but what it really comes down to i'm a different person now and i've really fallen into this role and i feel like i would really like a clean slate Mm -hmm. um it would take way too long to delete all the photos, remove all the tags, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and do all of that. Fuck There's also that, just yeah. people on there that I don't know who they are, yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it just came to a point. It's just overwhelming, dude. And like, yeah. I don't really use Facebook that often anymore. I post stuff on Instagram, and it's linked to my Facebook, and then it posts it for me on there. So I mm-hmm. don't really, you know, take the time. Um, so I don't care much. I just kind of care like a select few people can see what I'm doing and like I can connect with people that way. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of that. Oh, that was the, that was the point. I accidentally deactivated the wrong Facebook. So I deactivated (laughs) the new one and then fucking (laughs) I I deactivated the new one last night and then I added it back. Right. I reactivated it, but it's, it added itself to the original Facebook page. So as last night, bro, <laughs> I was trying to deactivate my my Facebook, the one, the original one. I was trying to deactivate, and I kept getting pissed off because I'd click on the on the app, and it would be like, "Oh, this page is deactivated." I'm like, "I have two. Why is it deactivated?" And then it'll reactivate. And I'm like, "Dude, what the hell's going on?" Oh man! I conjoined them, so the original Facebook page is now the admin for the new one, and I can't <laughs> switch the accounts over. So Maddie would like. I, I may have to go and ask Maddie because he gets so pissed at me with how I use social media. Oh, he is man. the first one to I, shred me apart whenever I, I do, do anything. I do a whole other podcast on this Facebook to level. That's the best <laughs> thing I've heard all day. Ah, uh, dude. I, ah, oh, man. I don't know why I just like uh, never adapted to like, yeah. Ca- I don't know. I just didn't care. Uh, well, best place to find you then is Instagram. And I think TikTok is the other one that's yes, good to find you yes. on. Just keep Instimation, up with your yes. stuff. TikTok, Instagram, those are the primary ones. Those are the ones I use the most. My man, uh, I appreciate being open and honest. I appreciate you. I think the sobriety journey is one that's worth chatting about for people who are in sobriety and also people who aren't. I think it's just, I think sobriety forces you to take accountability and honesty in your life that lacks in a lot of other places and not that you can't have that if you have a beer once a week or something. But like, I think it's a really valuable perspective and it is a really honest and interesting one. And I think it's a, I don't know. It's a very personal one, right? I think it's a one that we're all benefit from here. So I appreciate you sharing that. And of course, yeah, thank you. Thanks for talking about the show stuff. Um, People who are listening, if you made it this far, please like, comment, subscribe, leave a rating, do something cool. Tell me I'm worth listening to for some reason. Kevin, I'm going to give you the last word out of here. So what I've been doing is having people, having the guests tell me uh, what people should comment. If they made it this far, I want a word, an idea, a thought, something that people will leave in the comments as we wrap this up. So Kevin, I'll kick it to you for the last last second here. What should people leave if they made it this far? Um. Like, are you talking like in terms of the length of the video? Yeah, if they made if they made it this far made it which, to the end, what should they comment to yeah, prove leave, that leave they've gotten to the something, end? Yeah, some little <sighs> verification code. What's what's near and dear to Kevin's heart? Something inside joke from one of the guys that's funny. Something that'll make someone laugh. Ah, uh, anyway. comment this emoji. <laughs> you comment, yeah, comment this emoji. Nothing else, just that. <laughs> and if you're on Spotify, dude, sucks to be you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Love you guys. You guys are also cool. Bye. Have a great day. <laughs>